We might be live if we are. Hello, people. Welcome to Digital DJ Tips. We're just trying to get our system working here. Oh, we are live. I can see us. Hey, how's that, people? Uh, we're live and we don't even know it. Welcome. Uh, I'm, ho I'm guessing we are because I can see 22 seconds in on my screen. Uh, it, we'll just take it from here. Uh, I can hear my own voice telling me that uh, that uh, I'm not seeing us live. Hey, welcome, people. Uh, it is it is our Thursday Q and A live with Ben and me. Uh, we're just testing new systems and new software and new places to do these lives from. So uh, we had a bit of a stuttery start. Hello, Ben. Hello. Um, can you hear me, Ben? I can. I'm going to take my headphones off. I'm having some serious issues. I've got about three loops going around, so. I I'll tell you what you should do, Ben. And... You should go into all your open windows and, and click the mute so that you've only got one audio going. Uh, you'll have one on Mixcloud. You'll probably have one on Facebook as well or whatever. Just go into your open windows. And while you're doing that, I'll uh, uh, I'll say hello to some early people who are joining us. So welcome, people. If you are just joining us live, hi to Sean, who's on Facebook. And, uh, and uh, Welcome over there. If you're watching us on Mixcloud, hello over there. I can see we're, we're perfectly normally live over there on Mixcloud. Maybe you're watching us over on our um, YouTube page, uh, in which case, uh, welcome. Uh, it is Thursday Q&A Live. Have you managed to get only one version of this going on your uh, headphones, Ben? I have, but what I've had to do, I've had to close down the uh, my window that showed me the restream stream, and I think it might have been coming through also on the Mixcloud stream as well so yeah it will definitely I, have been coming through on the mixed cloud stream so uh so well i've got <laughs> i've got questions going on here if you can get them back on ben for uh if you can see them in your software maybe you can i uh, can yeah yeah well there you go you've got all the questions there right people um, i'm going to let you into a secret here um i'm on holiday next week so uh ben and myself are concocting to uh to switch this whole thing over to his shed in macclesfield in england uh, and what you've just seen is our very first attempt to do this together so hey that's what happens when you try new things so anyway what one minute in and we've fixed it uh, we're all good now um so let's get back to where we were how are you today ben I'm all right now, thank you. After <laughs> good, after all good. that going on, it was just you know, it was like a it's, a, it's a test it. flight. Yeah, it's a test it's like flight, one of them times where you have three tracks going all at the same time, and it's yeah, it's just, yeah, the they're all out of sync. Or yeah. you're halfway between two rooms in a club, and you can hear both rooms, and you're thinking they're out of time now. Like, oh no, they're in time now. That kind of thing. <laughs> uh, look, welcome everyone. It's Digital DJ Tips, the world's leading DJ school. The people behind this book. Uh, we are here to help you for the next hour. 45 minutes or so with your DJing questions and queries and so on. If you were with us on Tuesday when we were talking about one particular topic and one of those people who was asking any kind of question and I said, come back on Thursday, well, this is your chance. Uh, so you've got me, founder of the company, you've got Ben, our community manager, also uh, probably does more DJ gigs than any of us in the company, uh, who's a, you know, a, a working DJ. Uh, and we're just here to help you guys and girls. So that's our job. Uh, hello to the ruckus. I see you throwing that comment on the screen there, Ben. Uh, who says I can't stay long today, but I wanted to shout out to you guys in the fam anyway. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just do a few early hellos to people, Ben, if you can uh, look for some early questions as well. So hi to Dat Boy, Mixmaster G, Gregor, DJ Fuzz, Martin, DJ LV2D, all the regulars are here. Hi to Sarah. I hope you're feeling better, Sarah. Big Joe Joyce, uh, to GM, Driver John, to Vic, um, and to uh, Ghost of Sparta. Hey, that's a question. So maybe you're going to want to put that one on the screen in a minute. They're, they're from YouTube over on Facebook. Uh, we've got Sean and Wayne and Alex, who says, oi, oi, from the northeast of England, uh, to Dag, Dominic, Herbert, Pete Page, Charlie, uh, to Nelly. Uh, so loads and loads of people uh, who we see every week here, which is what we love. So thank you very much, people. Right. It's all about questions. Ben, what have you got? Uh, I've got the first one. I've got one from... Jason, um, can you do a live stream on Twitch or is it the same as Facebook where there's cutoffs and takedowns? Any advice on that, please? Well, we both do live streams on Twitch. Ben, do you want to share the info about Twitch? Uh, the Twitch is, we just go live. We haven't saved it. So, uh, mm. the, yeah, um, the, the streams aren't saved. So we use Restream, obviously, to go onto, the, onto Mixcloud, um, Twitch, and uh, YouTube. Um, so any advice really for like avoiding takedowns i've got some for for youtube anyway um but for twitch because we're going live on there and it's not saving it it, it seems seems fine at the moment seems so. fine i mean twitch twitch are going for music now they're going for djs they're going for 
getting music on their platform. But the, as Ben says, the key thing is um, set it up so it's not saving the recording of your live because the recording is going to be littered with mutes and things like that. But the actual live session, the actual when you are live, um, is certainly at the moment is absolutely rock solid and smooth and no one's got any problems with it, uh, which is how, why you're seeing Beatport and Serato and lots of DJs like our friend Mojax is on there every week. Uh, we're on there every week. Um, and as Ben mentioned, we use something called Restream. And Restream, um, let, go, let's just go live simultaneously, which is how we're live on Mixcloud, Facebook and YouTube right now and Twitch. Um, uh, and so that's how that works. So yeah, no problem. Just don't hit that record button. Um, Ben, do you want to put another question up? Yeah. Um, what's next from Pioneer? Any standalones on the horizon? I'm about to push the button and purchase uh, the AZ, or should I hold off? Good question. We haven't heard anything, is the answer. You know, we normally get something on the grapevine if something's coming. Um, if they tell us themselves, we can't tell you, but, um, you know, we, we often hear anyway, and then we can certainly share what we've heard. But I don't think you're going to get anything this year from Pioneer DJ. So if you want a standalone Pioneer DJ unit and you want one now, go and buy one now. You know, that's the bottom line because they're still going to work fine in five years, even if something new has come out. Uh, but if you want to wait till 2022, I'm sure they'll do something to catch up with the, with the market then. But I don't think it's going to happen in 2021 is my guess. Anything to add to that, Ben? Have you heard anything on the grapevine that we uh, that we haven't heard? No, if anyone, you're gonna, you're the person to know if. Uh, well, if you're closest. Has, you're so. closest to all the. You're closest to all the chatter on the social platforms. So maybe, uh, maybe you had heard something that I hadn't heard. But uh, no, but anyway, no, nothing yet. But I say because um, I was thinking. Obviously, we've had. Um, I know it was only virtual, but they had. Um, oh, my mind's gone blank now. The the Vegas show usually at the start of the year. Everyone be great. Oh yeah, the um the uh the the Los Angeles show Nam yeah, yeah. the, the yeah. virtual Nam show That's anyway it, Nam. yeah everyone be going how does he not know that but uh, just the stage fright my mind just went blank uh, yeah because I've already <laughs> had that I think a lot of uh, things may have already been kind of like obviously released around that by that time anyway so but yeah it's going back I've I've not heard anything yet either it's uh I always get Las Vegas and Los Angeles muddled up in my head. You know, sometimes you just have these blocks and you think for the rest of my life, you know, sometimes you get someone's name wrong. You call like someone called Pete, Dave. And you're like, I know, I know that name's wrong, but I know I'm going to make the mistake over and over again until eternity. So, uh, so I know what you mean. I know what you mean, Ben. Right. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, just having a quick look. Just give me two minutes. So, um... I'm looking as well. We're dealing with new systems here, people. So you're just going to have to deal with this uh, as we as we figure this out. Um, uh, 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 we've got one from a Facebook user. Uh, okay. Of late, I have uh, I have adap adapted to making playlists two days before my weekly gigs. But when I try to share them with my fellow DJs, there's always a negative about this. Uh, please advise. So you you make a playlist two days before your gig, and then you try and share that playlist with with other DJs. I guess the reason is why are you sharing it with other DJs? Um, what's the purpose of doing that? Uh, if you want to share a playlist for a gig, I would say that's fine. You know, I share the playlist from my live stream. Do you share your live stream playlists afterwards, Ben? I, I share them afterwards, but I don't share them before. Yeah, I think so, this is the key. Don't share them before. You know, keep keep play your cards close to your chest. Um, yeah, I kind of like if, if I've got a, a tune that I kind of I'm really excited about and I want to kind of like you know kind of like drop it and have the full effect kind of like you know the whole way i kind of don't want people to see it beforehand and then kind of like maybe google them and you know there's no no surprise it's like kind of finding out you know who who the villain is in a in a in a movie before you've seen it <laughs> it's just yeah you know, i, I think that, just don't share them ahead of time because if you share them ahead of time you're gonna get you're gonna get you're gonna be looking for opinions from other people and stuff um and you're also gonna get people saying oh you you know you're not playing in the moment you're planning this stuff you know there's always some idiot who thinks planning is a bad idea when it comes to djing um there's nothing wrong with getting a set getting a, a long list of tunes that you want to play and then only playing the ones that you feel like on the on the you know at the event or whatever mm. um that's that's extremely clever uh so yeah i'd say just don't let them have it ahead of time and share it afterwards share the tracks you actually played afterwards would be my advice yeah um, um okay so a quick look um Do you want me to pull one up from this list? Uh, yeah, please. 
Uh, so how do you avoid copyright strikes when streaming your sets in general? We've already covered Twitch. This is for Charlan on YouTube. Um, on you, on, sorry, yeah, you're on YouTube, Charlan. But um, the way to do it on YouTube specifically is to upload a video that contains all the music you want to play ahead of time. And then uh, when you've done that, leave it an hour or so and go to that video and you'll see all the tracks that have been fingerprinted by YouTube and it'll tell you the copyright status. It'll either be yellow, which means, hey, we know you've uploaded something copyrighted, but it's okay. We're gonna slap adverts on your video. Uh, or red, which is like, your video is banned. Um, and I actually, funnily enough, YouTube have launched a tool and literally in the last couple of days that I think streamlines this approach. So there might actually be a check tool now in YouTube Studio that makes this even easier, but you're still gonna have to upload what you want to put live either way. Um, and then you can just take out the songs that are going to cause you trouble and only play with the ones that won't. It's not always foolproof. For instance, I checked my live stream on Sunday, like I always do, and I had the new track by uh, Gorgon City and Drama in there, which was completely fine. It, it, it cleared copyright on the on the unlisted upload, and then it got a worldwide ban on the actual live stream for some reason. So it's not always foolproof, but... You know, I've done 30 YouTube live streams with music on in the last 11 months. That's the first time that's happened. So hopefully it's not a pattern and it was just a one off. But that's how that's how DJs do it, uh, um, Charlan. Uh, right, Ben, get a question on. Yeah, uh, another Facebook user um, is just asking what what what's the little but um, the box you've got for changing your. Uh... <laughs> your, your stream views. I think you've Someone always times. asks that. Someone always asks what the box is and what this stand is here. Uh, the stand, I think you, if you go to djtips.co slash stand, uh, I think you'll find that stand. But the box is this little thing. I'll show you now. I'm not having to use it today because Ben's in charge, which is a nice change. It's like someone cooking your dinner for you. Uh, but it's this little thing here. It's called a stream deck. And it has little pictures on it of all the things you're going to get when you press that button in your DJ software, in your um, live streaming software. Uh, I think it's about $90 or something. It's an Elgato Stream Deck. But honestly, you can set it all up on shortcode keys on your keyboard. It's just that with that, you can see the picture of what you're going to press. So it leads to fewer errors. Uh, and when you're getting a bit old and slow like me, that's a it's a welcome thing to have. Uh, it's, it's a little bit similar to what I use, but yours is a bit more... Uh, um, a lot, lot better than what I've got. I just use one of them uh, £15 calculate. Um, you know, the, the touch... Oh, the, the, the that, yeah. Pads. I've got one of those I, here as well. I just use one of them and I've uh, in OBS. One of those? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's what I use yeah. in my stream. Um, I just, um, pro, you know, just on the set the short codes in OBS and kind of put a little sticker on it and hit it when when I need to change yeah. it. These are great because they're Bluetooth, so you don't have, to have, don't have to have them right by the computer, do you? You can have them like, I have it, I have it behind me sometimes. Um, and also, because because obviously we do a lot of teaching, so we have slides on the, on the screen and stuff as well. I often use... The one I just showed you for changing all the scenes, like the overhead camera stuff, and I use this one to move the slides in the background. So uh, it can get a little bit keypad happy here sometimes. You gotta keep your wits about you. But anyway, that's what we use. Uh, ben, have you got another question? Uh, yeah, so we've got DJ Mixtape. Uh, do you think Mixcloud will sort out licenses so that DJs can archive, the, archive their live streams and people can access them? It's a good question. The reason that they don't do it is that it's called sync rights, as in sync as in the sync button, but it means something different, um, is that it's pretty much impossible to get sync rights for video and music, uh, you know, as a blanket license. Mixcloud operates on a blanket license, which means they pay the amount that they pay and, it, and then and you can have any music on there. But as soon as you introduce video, that kind of license doesn't exist. So. Uh, no, I don't think that'll happen. I don't think you'll be archiving your sets on Mixcloud and being able to have them available like you do on YouTube uh, anytime soon. Uh, and remember, YouTube doesn't have that license either, which is why you have to test your tracks ahead of time. Uh, and if YouTube can't do it, I can't see a tiny company in comparison like Mixcloud ever doing that or anyone else come to that. Uh, so no is the answer to that question. Um, by the way, people, I could ask... Uh, my usual question, please hit, or, or ask my usual request, please hit those share buttons if you're enjoying this. Hit the likes if you're enjoying this, um, because it, uh, well, to start with, it encourages us, and we need the encouragement, but also it helps to get this stuff out far and wide. So um, so we would appreciate that. Thank you. Um, ben. 
Uh, I'm just having a quick scan through. Uh, if you've got anything there that you've seen um, pop up, um, just, yeah, just pop that on the screen while I'm having a quick scan through. Okay, so um, let me have a little scan of what we're going on here. Uh, Eric says, "Go, uh, I'm going to get an SC6000M. These are the uh, these are the media players from uh, from Den and DJ that I've got the spinning platters. I've got one here somewhere. Uh, other than the Den in 1850, what mixes would you recommend with it? You know, mixes are mixes. Uh, at the end of the day, they they haven't changed in 20 years. So get any mixer you want. The Pioneer mixer will be great. Uh, you know, the DJM the DJM 900 Nexus 2. Uh, what else would I recommend? What's my favorite mixer? The Zone 96 is a very nice mixer. Um, yeah, just anything, you know, anything. Mixes are mixes at the end of the day. You're going to want to get something that is Serato compatible if you want the opportunity to plug in Serato and DJ with software as well, which the SC6000Ms let you do. Uh, it'll just save you having an external audio interface, but most Pro mixes are Serato compatible now anyway. So yeah, whatever you fancy, but the, the Denon 1850, it matches it. It looks nice with it. It's all got, all got the same color coded LEDs. I wouldn't look any further than that one if it was me. Um, Cool. Hope that helped. Uh, Eric? Ben? Uh, I've got one here about echoes and transitions. So when mixing hip-hop and R&B and using an echo out effect in a transition, do you use half beats or full or one beats, or does it depend on the BPM? Ben, do you ever use echo? Uh, I use it a little bit, uh, and I vary between half and one. I think it just depended on what kind of effect if I want. If I want a dim 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 that and then it's just a, a one beat if that's obviously what the you know the beat is or if i want something a bit more kind of i don't know chaotic a bit more it's it's a lower the lower the lower it down uh, yeah it all depends on on how i'm feeling also if your software has it you can use the three quarter beat echo which is which gives you a do 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 yeah. which is like it sounds nice because it's a it's an extra rhythm apart from the do 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 so you know not all software has that um, or not all systems have that, but if you've got a three-quarter beat echo and you want to use it just to echo a track out, stop a track, and start another one playing, play with that one because it can give you some nice, uh, uh, you know, nice flavour to your rhythms that you don't you don't get otherwise. Can work quite well with reggaeton and um, moonbaton and you know all all the the kind of more Latin sounding rhythms that, that have that in them anyway. Um, so have a play with that one if you want to get some brownie points and just avoid using the, the standard half or one beat. But I think most DJs use half or one, right? I think a quarter beat is a bit much and two beats is why not just use one beat? I think a quarter beat echo is a, a bit fast. So half or one beat tends to be the ones that most people use and either, like like Ben says. Uh, you want me to grab something, Ben, or have you got something there? I've I've sort of got one. I saw one earlier. It was asking about a DJ name. Um, I can't find it now who who it was. Um, I think they're asking to choose between t um, some DJ names. But um, a question though: How would you choose your? Uh, a D how would you choose a DJ name? Right. This is funny because the most popular article on digital DJ tips, you know, apart from where do I get free music, the most popular article on digital DJ tips is um, how do I choose a DJ name, um, and. It's just one of those things, isn't it? Um, so I would recommend that you just head over to Google, uh, how to choose DJ name, uh, type that in, and then digital DJ tips. I'm doing it now just to check, and you're gonna come up with an article called DJ Names, uh, your complete guide to choosing a great one. Hey, I tell you what, Ben, if we wanna flex your muscles on, uh, on this new gear, you could try and put that on the screen now and show them uh, how to choose DJ name, digital oh, DJ God. tips. We're testing Ben here, people, live. <laughs> Look at his poor face. Look at his poor face. Um, so uh, go on, Ben. You do that while I talk to people about okay. it. Try and get it up. Um, and um, there's loads of ideas in that article. Uh, the, the main thing is it's got to pass what we call the radio test. And that means is if you say it out loud to someone, like imagine you were saying it on the radio, would, you, would the person hearing it be able to write it down correctly or repeat it correctly to someone else? And if not, then it's too complicated and too silly, uh, and maybe simplify it a little bit. Uh, so that's the main the main way you would do that. Um, this is horrible for you, Ben. I know that, but hey, <laughs> that's what bosses do. They test people. Have you managed to get that page yet? Uh, I've got a page. I hope I've got the right one. Anyway, DJ on, names. On. Your, uh, let's, let's give it a go. Your ultimate guide or something. You're complete. Oh, you've done it. Look, you passed. You passed the test with flying colours. So that's the article. 
um, your, your ultimate guide to choosing a great DJ name uh, that Ben is just scrolling down now on the screen. This has got loads and loads and loads of tips in, in, in it for you. Um, so uh, I'm not going to go tell you any more other than that article exists and that you can head over to Digital DJ Tips and find it. As I say, the best way to do it is just to Google it. Um, but if you click the little the little magnifying glass in the top right hand corner of the website, you can also find it that way as well um, by typing in DJ names there. Um, well done, Ben. Uh, you. You're going to be fine next week when you're in charge and I'm off like this on the beach doing yeah. nothing. Um, uh, go on, Ben, see if you can pull up another. Oh, and let, in fact, while you're looking for a next question, let me just quickly answer this one from Charlie, who says, when you're recording on Serato, how do you avoid having the mic voice coming uh, through when you're doing a live stream? I didn't know it did come through, um, Charlie. Ah, right, okay, yes, it does come through. Uh, well, the answer is you can't. Um, if you hit record in Serato, it won't record the microphone ordinarily. It will only record the music. If you then plug a microphone into your controller and talk, then the music plus the microphone will go out on your live stream. So you've got the best of both worlds. Serato is recording just the stream minus the vocals, assuming you didn't want your, your voice. Uh, and uh, then you've got a nice mixtape version that you can upload to Mixcloud or whatever. But your audience is hearing the microphone. So is that what you is that what you want, Charlie? Because if so, you need you needn't do anything. It's, it's not going to record the mic. Um, but if that's not what's happening, tell us and we'll try and help you a little bit further. Um, so Ben, uh, I've got one from uh, Bobby Rhodes. It's a bit similar to the the Pioneer one. Uh, it's probably the same same information I've not heard, but um, yeah, just regarding the, the new Mark mix track. Platinum FX right now, or you know, should wait next year. I think the new Mark Platinum uh, FX Pro, and oh, sorry, the new Mark FX Pro and the new Mark uh, um, FX Platinum, I think that's what they're called, um, will be the new Mark um, mix track controllers for several years to come. They were only launched within the last year. And if you look back at the mix track one, two, three, and now the FX, they didn't change very much. Um, I think that design is pretty stable now and not much will change. So uh, I think you find uh, you'll be safe buying that. Hey, look at that. DJ Fuzz giving you some love there, Ben. Uh, it's awesome that. having Ben. And, you know, we realized, I mean, look, Digital DJ Tips has got eight full time people working on it. Um, and we realized that Ben does more DJ than bloody all of us. So why the hell are we letting Ben just get away with answering all your questions and comments and being helpful on social? Uh, we need to get him on these. So that's why you're seeing a bit more of Ben at the moment. Um, so cool. I'm glad you like having Ben here. Um, right, Ben, have you got a question? Uh, I haven't. No. So if you've got one there, uh, okay. feel free to, to answer. I will indeed answer one. Uh, Dag says, uh, we know that, that Native Instruments is really lazy these days. Well, you said it. I didn't. Um, so uh, have there been any, been any rumors about new equipment? No. And Dag, I don't believe that Native Instruments will be launching any new equipment anytime soon. Uh, personally, no rumors at all. By the way, you know, earlier I said, you know, having Ben controlling this live stream is a bit like having someone else cooking my dinner for me. I can just sit here and talk. Um, my wife, Faye, who is also our uh, who's also our um, production manager and Ben's boss, there you go, <laughs> we are a family business, uh, says no one's gonna cook your dinner for you. So there we go, looks like, uh, looks like I'm, uh, I'm back in the kitchen when I get back. I'm a man under the thumb, uh, Ben. Uh, this one's probably just this one's just for you, I think. <laughs> what beat are you hitting? <laughs> uh, okay, so this is a, this is a, an interesting one. We're hitting a beach called San Ho San Jose del Valle, which is in Cadiz province in Andalusia, and it's actually a beach on a inland freshwater um, lake or reservoir. It's not actually by the sea, um, so that's where we're going. And the reason we're going there is that Faye, who we've just talked about, my wife is a uh, an Ironman contestant and she needs to do some pretty hardcore swimming while we're away. So she'll be training uh, in that in that body of water uh, while we are sat, sat there doing very little uh, as a family. And also I'll probably be doing the live stream uh, a week on Sunday from somewhere similar. So expect a live stream from somewhere different to the normal Balcony Beats view uh, in uh, in a week's time. So, uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing and that's why. Great question, thank you. Um, Ben. Yep, uh, one from Kevin. Uh, what is the best starter DJ headphones? You want to answer that one, Ben? Um, I think it always depends on your your, your price range because um, mm. I think there'd be a lot of people, you know, say just, you know, the Sennheisers, uh, they are good headphones, but they are, they can be quite um, 
you know, quite expensive they're, they're for your first quite set. Quite expensive, exactly. So that's so, like ninety, a hundred dollars for the Sennheiser HD twenty fives that are pretty much the standard. As long as you don't mind a headphone on your ear rather than over your ear, because they've got quite small ear cups. Mm. That said, Pioneer's Q1. I've actually got a pair of Q1s here. Let me just uh, get those headphones off and grab them. Some of you will have seen these because we use them a lot on our intro um, on our intro stuff. These are a really good headphone for the money. Again, they're kind of like on ear. They don't really go over your whole ear, but I find them very, very comfortable. Um, and you can buy these kind of funky different colored leads and stuff for them. Again, they're not the cheapest in the world. I think I think the Pioneer is about $50, maybe $60 or something like that off the top of my head. Um, but to be honest with you, you can buy reasonably good DJ headphones for twenty dollars nowadays. They might not last you forever. Uh, brands like Pile Pro, um, just get on Amazon and find the twenty dollars headphones that have got a headband, that have got a coiled cable you can detach, and that cover your ear. Uh, and look for fifteen twenty dollars. If they last you six months, you're in. You might find they last you five years. Um, so depending on your budget, there's three ideas there. Um, anything to add to that one, Ben? Um, the ones I've got, well, I don't, don't, don't think they're too expensive. Uh, I can't remember the brand name now. Uh, the, oh, the brand's Sony, but I can't remember the, the name of them, uh, the number of them. Um, they were quite Maybe MDR something or other, I guess. Something. Uh, they were quite good. You know, they were they were good, and they've lasted me quite a while. Um, that... What normally happens is they break here. Headphones always break here, right? Yes. So that's what you want to watch. Uh, if you get a chance to like audition them, try and see how how sturdy that bit looks. Because I've got pictures of me DJing with old MDR 700s from Sony 20 years ago with sellotape around the uh, around These the are edge. super glued. Oh, there you go. These ones I've got on are super glued. These are, they weren't, they're not very expensive. They're more studio headphones. Uh, I did use them for a couple of gigs and I've had to super glue it there where, where it snapped so yeah that's there is a, a bit of a weak point and um, yeah. obviously tips up on this one as well um just to try and long make them a bit longer i've sellotaped taped them up and glued them up just to make them a bit more sturdy because yeah give I them a bit find... more longevity jumping ahead of the uh you know prevention is better than cure i exactly. like it a really quick one here from gerald while you're looking for something else to throw on the screen ben uh this is gerald in north las vegas or Los Angeles, if you're me. Uh, so we were talking earlier how that's one of my confusions. Um, who says, uh, how do I transfer my songs from Shazam to iTunes into my music on my Mac? So Shazam to iTunes, um, you can get playlists from Shazam into Apple Music by using a couple of services. One that's free is called Tune My Music. Tune My Music, as in tuning a guitar. Just look for the website, and that gives you loads of services that you can take music from and to, and I'm pretty sure Shazam is one of them. Also, Apple Music, Spotify, Deezer, all these services, quite often you can link your Shazam account to those services, and then it will automatically put them in a playlist in those services. If you then want to buy them, uh, then there are ways of getting lists into things like Beatport to buy. Again, Tune My Music can do it for you. Uh, but but basically what you're doing is mu moving music from a streaming service into, into, into owning the files. Um, and that's not quite so simple. Um, as I say, I think Tune My Music can put your music from a streaming service straight into um, a Beatport car. I think it can. Um, it might even be able to do it from Shazam, although I've never tried it. Have a look at that. Um, stream uh, tunemymusic.com uh, as a way of doing this. Um, uh, let us know how you get on. I'd be interested to know uh, what you discover there. Uh, Gerald, uh, Ben, what you got for us? Uh, I've got one from Mark. Uh, she has a question. I've um, seen some DJs been able to share mixed cloud mixes to Instagram. Do you have any videos or press about it? It can't seem to find anything. They're so probably... And I'm, videos. Yeah, I'm only guessing. They're probably just uploading a very small part of their mixed cloud video to Instagram as a loop or something and um, saying, you know, link in bio uh, to, to, to watch it. They might be doing it when they go live on Mixcloud. Um, but as, to my knowledge, there's no way of embedding a whole Mixcloud video in Instagram. Uh, if Lauren, our, our Instagram person, was here, she could tell us for sure. Uh, I might just ask her now, actually, while we're uh, on air. Uh, I'll see if she's around. Um, uh, 
Uh, so while I'm doing that, Ben, do you want to grab another question and read uh, it out if you can yeah, see one? A quick look. Uh, uh, by the way, Jason says I rock the Newmark Red Wave Carbons. They are great for me. A good-looking headphone that one as well. So uh, you picked well there as well. Um, and uh, while you're looking, Ben, let me just. Uh, grab something else. Scott says, my first DJ headphones were Radio Shack realistic headphones, and I used them for 15 years. <laughs> they were cheap, but they were great. Uh, and John says, Northwest Audio, I got the uh, uh, HD25 75th anniversary headphones for 75 notes. These are the Sennheisers, absolutely brilliant. And AKG do an award-winning on-ear headphone for about $50 or pounds, says Salvation Drum and Bass. So there you go. Uh, yeah, right, I what like have you got, AKG. Ben? Uh, yeah, I just want to say I like AK, AKG. I've got a set somewhere as well in one of my, in one of my laptop bags. Um, yep, yeah, I've got one from uh, DJ Young. Uh, can I learn to scratch on a controller, or do I need turntables or rain or rain twelves? Go ahead, Ben. You can answer that one. Yeah, you can scratch on a on a controller, uh, and we have a course as well, which is scratching uh, di scratching for DJs on uh, controllers. Uh, I got I got it the wrong way around, but yeah, if you head over to the uh, to the courses page, um, and in fact, I'll try and show it you now. Hang on, there you go. I'm I'm trying it now. Uh, yeah, good on seconds. you, man. Uh, it's scratching for controller DJ by Steve Canuetto by DJ Angelo as well. Go takes you from, from beginner to absolute superstar hero on 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 this stuff, uh, and it's uh, it's totally caught, totally taught, totally taught on controllers. Um, you just have to get used to the idea that you haven't got something spinning. Uh, that's all. Uh, and when you get that down, you can learn to scratch on anything. Some of the very best scratch performances ever have been done on controllers. So don't think that you, you need to use spinning platters. Uh, I think the thing is, if you're used to using turntables, you'll be more comfortable on turntables. But if you're learning from scratch, if you pardon the pun, you can do it on, uh, on controllers, no problem at all. Thanks yeah, for sharing like, that, Ben. Um, yeah, it's like I was say it's like um pre um you know he's he's done the is it the Peter Piper routine on a I think it's on an S yeah pre pre three. on Joni our our, uh, our tutor, um, so uh, Jason says depending on the controller, um, motorized platters are great next to classic techniques. Um, uh, Jason doesn't like the digital spin back backspin effect. It depends on the software and on what what you're using. Um, Jason, uh, yeah, some is better than other. If you turn off key lock, especially on Serato, it sounds a lot more realistic when you do backspinning and scratching. Because otherwise, Serato is trying to keep you on, keep the pitch on key when you're scratching. Um, so a lot of DJs do that. By the way, Lauren says, uh, "I'm who's our who's our um, expert on all things." embedding and social media and stuff uh, i'm not sure exactly how people are doing that on uh instagram sharing mixcloud but uh she's going to answer you in the chat mark um and says if you send an example of what you mean via instagram direct messages she will pick it up there and and help you out there so thanks for that lauren and mark uh instagram direct messages to digital dj tips lauren will will help you there especially if you can send an example of what you mean um so there you go over and above we like to go over and above people to help you out. Um, you spotted anything else you want to share, Ben? Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, so, Pete Page, how do I get my playlist from Virtual DJ in Windows onto Engine Prime? Uh, the DJ Buddy program only works with Apple. So uh, I don't think there's any way you can do that, Pete. I don't think there's any way you can do that from a uh, PC, I'm afraid. Um, not that I know. If any, anyone can help Pete, uh, what do you know? What, what, where, where was Pete? Uh, uh, what platform? Uh, uh, Facebook, I think. Facebook. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if, you, if you're on Facebook and you can help Pete, uh, I'm sure he'd be pleased for you uh, over there. Um, so um, there's a comment from Digital DJ Tips, which I'm going to try and read out. It says three kilometers, um, which is bizarre in itself. Oh, I can swim. Oh, this is Faye. This is my wife. She said, because I was talking about Faye be, uh, going swimming in this freshwater reservoir. She says, I can swim. And then it just ends. And then later it says, I can swim three kilometers. That meant to say, but the dog clicked reply. You couldn't write this stuff. <laughs> uh, I know exactly what's happening there. Faye is sat on the bed with her laptop propped up on her knees working. Uh, and uh, the dog jumped on her. So yeah, you're right. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. You really can't. Um, and whoever it was over there on our um, 
on our Facebook who said, I've got the Scratching for Controller DJ course and it's completely awesome. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, if I can see your name in the next five seconds, uh, I will read it out. If not, we're going to cut back to Ben who's going to put another question up on the screen. Uh, they're coming in so quickly that everything's scrolling past like uh, making me dizzy. So, uh, But anyway, thank you for whoever it was who gave the thumbs up to the, uh, the Scratch course over there. Uh, uh, it's Alex, Alex Trujillo. So thank you for that, Alex. Right, Ben. Uh, one for you, because uh, I have not used these, but have you used the Sennheiser HD 300 Pro? Have I used the Sennheiser HD 300 Pro? No, I'm sure they're lovely. They're a Sennheiser headphone. They'll be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, what else, Ben? Uh, let's have a quick look. Everyone's talking headphones. There. Everyone's talking yeah. headphones. Scott's, my, my current pair of Sony's that I used for so long that the ear pads disintegrated. But instead of replacing the headphones, I just got some new memory phone ear pads. Yeah, exactly. That's what always disintegrates. My um, my daughter stole my pair of, um, oh, what are they called? I uh, can't remember the name now. My mind's gone blank now. Um, very famous brand that got bought by another company recently. I can't, I can't remember either the brand or the company. There you go. It's not just you, Ben. My mind goes blank as well. <laughs> anyway, they've got really nice metal screw-on um, that never break uh, ear cups uh, and they totally disintegrated totally totally disintegrated but we just got her some well, we're going to get some more uh, earbuds ear, ear, ear cups for them and they'll be they'll be good as new again um, oh what's that brand called hexagonal hexagonal ear cups come on v, people help me out V-Mode 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 thank you very much Ben we got there together um, uh so uh, DJ Young says your scratch course is l is likely a lot less money than the three thousand dollars I was considering spending on gear. Felt thank you for helping me avoid avoid that. Yeah, it is. It's uh, about ten times less than that, uh, and it will give you skills for life. But the gear will wear out. So just look at it. The, look at it that way. Invest in knowledge. Uh, and Philip says V Moda. Thank you for jumping in there quicker than both Ben and myself. Philip, uh, right. Last last fifteen twenty minutes, people. What have you got here? Uh, ben. In fact, yeah. no, last 10 minutes, we've got to shoot off a little bit early today. So yeah. get your questions in now quickly, people. Go on, Ben. Uh, yeah, it's just about uh, being a mobile DJ. Do you agree that seven to 10 hour sets will really help you learn how to read your dance floor? They'll help you learn how to stand up straight without doing your backing for seven to 10 hours oh, as well. <laughs> what's the longest you've ever, yeah, you, it's knees with you, isn't it, Ben? What's yeah. the longest set you've ever played? What's, what's your longest set ever, Ben? Oh, I think most uh, one of my old residencies. I used to start about ten till about four in the morning. So that was that was that, that was my longest one. I used to do that pretty much every every week. Sorry, oh. I didn't understand. Sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> that's my 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 uh, watch. Your uh, watch obviously. Your watch cannot figure out how to play long <laughs> DJ sets. You you you've blown her mind. Yeah. Um. um but yeah, just yeah, so It's just just time really just uh, over, you know just seeing what just from my experience really and kind of clocking down writing down any tracks that do work that's how i've done it uh if I, you know if, if i know something that's not quite worked uh, you know i don't really try to try it again but if i know something's kind of really kind of like um, set the dance floor on fire you know just you know i make i used to carry a notepad um also as well I used to and i'm going off topic a bit but i also used to keep my requests there as well and then research them as well when i got home um but yeah it's just general just just experience and the more you do the more you learn how to how to read the crowd and looking for toe tapping and kind of yeah just throwing the songs out there and yeah the way i used to do it i used to play um not very often like you did that you did that every week ben so yeah. um you know we used to run uh, once a month we used to run an all-nighter at the club which uh, was 10 p.m till 6 a.m uh, and normally you know there'd be two or three djs on there'd be there'd be two residents and a guest it'd be resident guest resident um, but sometimes it was just me. Um, and I did that uh, certainly a few times where I played from 10 p.m. till 6 a.m. So apart from pacing yourself, getting as much sleep as you can the day before, you know, only drinking water till 4, 8, 4 a.m. I used to love it getting to 4 a.m. and saying, I'm going to start drinking now, knowing that I'd still be reasonably sober at 6 a.m., but, you know, up for a party. Um, oh, to be young again. But um, uh, I, I used to treat it as three DJ sets. So it was back in the days of records and I would take three boxes of records. So I would pack for like 10 to one, one to four and four to six. And I would only, and so it was almost like I was going away from one gig and turning up at another. I'd literally lock the box and put the next box up, which would give me a beginning, middle and end. And that was my way of kind of pacing 
uh, pacing myself psychologically, but also knowing that I thought about the music earlier in the night, the music peak time, and the music later on. And funnily enough, I've just been talking about, uh, I've just been recording for all you Digital DJ Lab members, I've just been recording an action plan called How DJs Know What to Play Next, which is going to be uh, in your Digital DJ Lab is our subscription program for DJs who want to stay ahead of the game, by the way, if people don't know that. Um, and I've just been recording some new training for there. And one of the things I talked about was, you know, you can get the dance floor excited by moving the energy up, but you can also get a dance floor excited by moving the energy down. And that works really well at the end of long DJ sets when people are tired. You can't just keep pummeling away at them at high BPMs and high energy levels. At some point, you're gonna to have to pull back. And I used to find it like four, 4.30 in the morning, dropping 15 BPMs and playing something people knew. It would just put an immediate warmth around the room because everyone's tired legs would say, ah, I can dance a bit slower now and you know you could really just lift the the atmosphere easily by by doing that so if you are playing long sets think about the up but also think about the down at the end because a lot of djs will just try and play up all the way to the end and that's a mistake um cool ben uh well with this one i'm not sure if we are to get to the actual answer um i might need a bit need a bit more information um but yeah but any really any sort of any tips of troubleshooting um again if you if your laptop keeps on crashing where you've got the DJ, ddj 400 um so this yeah. is on youtube if anyone's got yeah. windows advice for someone who's uh whose record box software keeps crashing i mean the truth of the matter is uh that you could have a system resource problem right what mm. would you do ben to try and just diagnose constant crashes you're a windows well, user uh yeah although you are slowly switching over to mac yeah. uh go on tell us uh most of the time if i've got issues i kind of a few things to look at first if my OneDrive is uploading anything because that can cause me no end of trouble because it's just anything running in the background um so i just trying to just turn everything off um, or just you know check the processor um also I do a bit of a scan uh, to try and keep on top of things as well but yeah first thing i look at is um if i've got anything uploading or anything that's going to drain uh, another one that i use for work purposes obviously i've got adobe cloud for doing all the graphics for for digital dj tips and stuff and if that decides it's going to do an update that really does grind my system of computer system right down um yeah. so it's yeah just have a look at you know if there's anything that's taken up the processor anything that's taken up the memory um if that's not working maybe reinstall um again or if you could even even try reinstalling windows at a later day, i won't recommend that straight away because you, you could lose everything so yeah um, i think reinstalling your operating system is definitely a, 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 a final resort you yeah. could just try reducing the latent uh, increasing the latency increasing mm. the buffer size um a couple of people have pointed out is it an intel or an amd computer if it's an amd you'll probably always have problems yeah, dj software works intel. a lot better with intel uh, someone else has said your hard drive might be about to fail that might be very true it could be an advanced warning that you need a new hard drive so mm. um there will be a reason for it you know dj software doesn't uh it doesn't just fail um so so it's worth continuing to it's try and most, figure out what that reason is yeah it's most um, likely going to be an issue with the actual pc not the say not the software and but also again it's, i know we couldn't really answer it so but you just need you know is anything like you know, is it, depending on what also what your processor is as well like, there's so many kind of yeah factors in working that one out so unfortunately we can't quite get to the bottom of that one but hopefully Kesun, Kesun says out. says hey amd is good yes if you if you're having no problems with amd great but certainly uh, a lot of the the software um, if you go to the pages about recommended systems, a, um, a lot of DJ companies will recommend you away from AMD. So it's, I mean, it's not always going to be the case that it doesn't work, but that could be something to check um, and see if uh, and see if that's an issue. Um, okay, uh, we are into the last few minutes. I just want to let people know that right now we've got a, um, a real special partnership with Beatport. If you are a brand new DJ, if you're completely new to this, you've got no music, you've got no clue about how this is done. We've got our very beginner DJ course and Beatport has thrown in two months of their DJ music streaming, either Beatport link or BeatSource link. And that means that you can have eight weeks of learning to DJ without having to buy a single tune, which is a real help when you're a beginner DJ. Um, and what's more, we've packaged the whole lot together, not for the usual price of $147 plus uh, up to $90 of free subscription from Beatport, 
Now you get the whole lot for $95, which is a really good deal. So the way to uh, find out more about that is just to go to the Digital DJ Tips website, click on the big advert that says uh, DJ Made Easy plus Beatport, um, and uh, learn about that. It's a really good deal. It's doing really well. Lots of people are excited about learning to DJ because it's the first time anyone's offered kind of music and training in one place. Um, so we're pleased about that partnership, uh, as, are, as are the Beatport people. And uh, yeah, go and have a look at it. Um, so lots of you are talking about AMD processors. Um, uh, OSF42 is saying Pioneer doesn't support AMD. Other people are saying, yes, I've got AMD. So yeah, just uh, just check it out. Um, if, if you've got problems, that might be. What we're always saying is it might be uh, an issue. Right, Ben, last few questions. What have you got? Uh, any tips for someone who, who's a dedicated tractor user who is planning to try and use Serato more? Any tips? Uh, I don't think you have any problems, really. Have you ever used Tractor, Ben? Uh, I started off on Tractor. Um, that was my, yeah, that was my my uh, software choice when I first started. When I went into digital, um, yeah, I've moved over to Recordbox now. Um, but um, any tips? I don't know. Just, so move to Serato. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. You know, the basics are the same. Uh, there's nothing, you'd probably find Serato easier. Tractor is a bit overly complicated. Mm -hmm. Serato is a bit less, bit more full. You know, it's going to be a bit like moving from Windows to Mac, I would say. Uh, if you're used to some of the flexibility of Tractor, you might be a bit frustrated with Serato. But if you are, um, if, you know, a bit infuriated by some of the idiosyncrasies of Tractor, shall we say, you might find Serato a bit of a breath of fresh air because it just kind of like is a bit easier to use. Um, yeah, but DJ software is DJ software. It's like switching from a Sony camera to a Canon camera, you know, or switching from a, you know, a, a, between two types of car. At the end of the day, they all do the same thing. You just got to figure out that the, the indicators on the other side or whatever. You know, your foot pedals are always going to be in the same order. There's nothing so fundamentally different that you you're going to hit the brake and crash. You know, so I think you'll have fun um, changing up the software. Something that's good to do every now and then to keep stuff uh, exciting. Um, uh ben um let's have a quick look um while well, you're looking are we, uh taking lighting questions if so your thoughts on the chauvet gig bars i've actually got a chauvet gig bar here they're yeah, they're great they're great and the good thing about those so these for people who don't know these are like a t bar uh that has got all kinds of lights along the top i think that's the one that i think that's the gig bar i'm trying to remember my chauvet bars so it's got like um it's got all kinds of um, clever stuff that uh, goes along uh, along the lighting rig. So it's got like spinning lights and uh, a little laser on it, I think. Um, yeah, they're really good. Um, and the good thing is that you can buy buy one and that's enough lighting for a small party. And then when you're ready, buy another one and you can have one on each side of your DJ setup. Uh, yeah, they're good. They're a good a good start in, uh, in DJ lighting. You know, in the end, if you grew and grew and grew, you'd want to buy, you know, they're almost like a pick and mix, right? You get a bit of everything on one bar. And in the end, you're going to want to buy bigger versions of all those lights. And in the end, you probably won't want the gig bar. You'll sell it on. Uh, but they're a great way to get lots and lots of lights. In fact, I've got one um, sat in my hall at home, uh, and we're planning on installing it here, so we can, uh, you know, we can uh, we can make it a bit more fun when we uh, when we don't want to be teaching. We just want to be playing some music in the studio. So so watch this space. Um, we did review one of the earlier gig bars on Digital DJ Tips, but that's that's a long time ago. They, they've got newer ones since then but yeah go for it it's all good uh ben final question or two any tips for people with gas <laughs> and I, 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 gear do you want to explain what gas is ben uh yeah it's buying lots of gear gear i, I can't say the words but yes it's, it's buying lots of having lots of gear not not the uh, the wind type um yes. So yeah, I mean, you can probably see from my background, I've you know I've suffered from a bit of gas. Um, I have sold some gear recently. I just had to just bite the bullet and kind of, kind of just let go of it and, and just sell it on and you know and let somebody else enjoy enjoy it. You know, I can't use it all. So yeah, my advice is you know if you don't use it, you know sell it on. Is you know it's just going to sit there otherwise and you know somebody else somebody else you know a, a new a beginner could enjoy it. You know and they they could start their journey. Um, yeah so i just it's a it's, it's a good point actually because you know one of the youtubers i follow as, I, as i've said to you i'm uh you know one before one of my little hobbies is, is photography and um also when we were doing a lot of video work there's a youtuber i've always followed called uh the everyday dad 
Uh, he's got really big now. He was tiny when I first started following him. He's a really nice guy. Um, and he's got total gas. He's totally got gear acquisition syndrome. I mean, he's the worst case I've ever seen. He just gets really excited about everything, buys it, reviews it, sticks a video up, and then a week later he sold it again. But he sells it again. So while he's got completely incurable, you know, um, shiny new thing syndrome, um, at least he's realized that there's no point hoarding gear. Um, and, you know, I've, I've watched him buy the same thing over and over again <laughs> and then sell it and then buy it again a year later and stuff. The guy's, the guy's ill. Um, but, um, yeah, I think, you're, I think Ben's right there. Um, selling stuff on if you don't need it is the key if you really can't stop yourself buying stuff. And maybe buying secondhand as well, and then you can sell it on at the price you paid for it. So, um, mm. so yeah. Um, so lots of people saying, I, want, I wanted my question answered. Damn, look, people, we can't answer everything on these. I will give you a tip, though. If you're a Digital DJ Tips student, come to Student Live when we do our Student Live broadcast in Student Hub in your private group because all those questions get answered every time. So if you are a student and if you're not a student, as soon as you buy any of our courses, we invite you into that private group. And it's like this, but less manic, fewer people, more chance to go into depth with what you, uh, what you need help with. Um, yeah, so again, I, I apologize if i've not got to everyone's questions it's it's my first time it's impossible this, it's impossible so. there's bloody hundreds of them um it's impossible ben don't worry about that i probably answer about 30 percent uh if that every week um a little bit of advice from dag when playing really long sets i tend to play in waves so you can relax the floor every now and then yeah that's definitely true like as i was saying with lowering the energy um uh, but you better be really experienced to not play slow too early or maybe too late. It's tricky but fun. Uh, agreed, it is. Um, but then again, no one said long sets were easy. Um, so, right, Ben, pick a final question. Um, I've got this one. I'm not too sure. So what do I need to transfer music to YouTube? Example, USB stick and then put into a laptop. Um, I don't know if you mean kind of like transferring the music or do you mean transferring your, you know, a filmed... Set I think or... I think what Stevie's talking about is when we were talking about earlier when we were wanting to test whether our music is going to get uh, barred on YouTube. Right, so here's what to do. Yeah, it's a really good question. Here's what to do. Get any video editing software, like you get iMovie with a Mac. Is there is there a cheap or free one you can get for a Windows computer, Ben? Uh, I think there was, but I'm not on my Windows. I'm actually on my Mac, and I can't remember because I've been... Yeah, I've yeah but been anyway, using, any, um, any cheap video yeah, editing software. Just go, just, just go into the store, um, into into the Windows store and have a look. Um, yeah, grab something there. free. And now what you want to do is go into your DJ software, get the playlist that you want to play, uh, drag it into the video editing software so you've got all the music on a timeline. Uh, but now you've got no picture, right? So now get a photo, any photo, drag it onto the timeline as well. Make the photo as long as all the music. So now you've got like an hour long video which is just a photo and the soundtrack is all your tracks. Then output that as a video, just a low resolution video. So it doesn't take very long to output and it's not very big. Then upload that video to YouTube, even though it's just a still picture and all your music and um, don't publish it. That's really important. Wait an hour and you, or even a few minutes and YouTube will tell you which of those tracks uh, are, are going to cause you problems and which are okay. Uh, so that's the way I do it. You know, uh, if your music isn't on your computer already, you'll have to get it on there somehow. But but that's basically the way uh, the way it works. Yeah, right. That's same same with me. I just yeah, I do the same thing. Uh, people, I've got one final request because we're done now. Uh, this is the very first time Ben has been in control of the live stream. Uh, we had a stuttery start while, while we got it all figured out, but um, I, I'm sure you'll agree that Ben's been a great professional and a great asset to have here. Uh, and also, uh, nothing's gone wrong since. We've had an hour of smooth helping you guys and girls out. So I'd like you, whatever platform you're on, just to click that appreciation, click the like, click, click the heart, click the thumbs up uh, and let Ben know, because he'll be there, uh, not only checking that it's all gone live properly and the recordings are all in place, but also just checking up on questions that we haven't managed to answer, because that's his job, part of his job. So give him some love, click those um, loves and hearts and so on. It'd be really uh, useful uh, to know we've done a good job. Uh, it's Ben on his own next week. How do you feel now having done that, Ben, for uh, for an hour? I think you'll be all uh, right. A little bit more relaxed, because I know how how this how this all works. I've literally this is the first time I've kind of had a proper go at this this program. So. Uh, feel more more comfortable more relaxed good so yeah and i'm looking forward to it and i uh, hope you you guys are as well yeah so join ben next week in the same slot uh 
join Steve for Tuesday Tips Live on Tuesday next week. Uh, I, as I say, I'm on holiday next week. Uh, however, I will be there for the live stream, which I'm going to do from my holiday holiday destination. Um, who's on live this week? It's you, isn't it, Ben, on Sunday? It's me, yeah. Look at your watch now. Oh, I haven't got my watch on. Uh, look at your watch now, people. Uh, the time on your watch is when you should join us on all channels apart from YouTube, uh, sorry, apart from Facebook, uh, right now on Sunday. So join us right now at this time on Sunday, wherever you are in the world, look at your watch. And we uh, will bring you an hour of Ben live from the very yeah. shed that he's in now. Yeah, uh, what have you got lined so up just... for us? Oh, I've got a bit of few bit of, few disco tracks, uh, my usual kind of remixes as well. It's just uh, you know we go into daylight savings on uh, no we go we change our clocks on Sunday, so I've got a nice yeah, appropriate song to to bring that in and yeah. Just oh, he's some... got a clock. He's got a clock song. What clock song could Ben be using to? Bring oh, it's not a clock song. It's a, it's a summertime song. Ah, it wouldn't be Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, would it, Ben? It I'm is. just guessing. It is, yeah. <laughs> you it, meant yeah. to say you, you meant to say you'd have to wait and see, not it is. Um, cool. Well, what a tune! What a timeless tune to start yeah. a live. That's my wife's idea as well. She's like, oh, it's, it's, we're going to summertime. What you play that? I was like, I will do. It's one of the best. It's one of the all-time yeah. classics. Um, awesome. So yeah, 5 p.m. GMT, 5 p.m. London, midday Eastern is when uh, you can join Ben on uh, on Sunday. Right. Ben, I'll leave it to you to say goodbye and stop this broadcast, seeing you're in charge. Yep, so I'm just going to find the uh, the finish button and I, yeah, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see you all on ne next week and or I'll see some of you on, on Sunday. Uh, so right. get good, get out there and make the moments. Nice one. Later, later, later folks. Have a good one. Cheers. Bye. Bye.